Volkanovski begins this fight in orthodox stance, but if you look at the distance between their feet, you can see that they're both at kickboxing range. And Volkanovski is very mindful of the power of the body hand. You can see here that as he looks to probe with that lead hand, the body hand intercepts and then looks to land a right hand of his own. And immediately, Volkanovski looks to put distance between himself and the body hand, although on the exit, you can see that as he plants that back foot, he then lands an inside leg kick on the body hand. And 40 seconds later, the same thing happens. You can see here that as Volkanovski Volkanovski looks to make his entry and plants his lead foot into range. And the moment he puts weight on that front leg and plants that front foot, that's when the body hour then launches an attack of his own. And while doing so, you can see that Volkanovski looks to land an inside leg kick, but immediately afterwards, he doesn't want to engage in an exchange. He wants to land that leg kick and get out of there and establish distance between himself and the body hour. And Alexander Volkanovski's main form of success is coming from kickboxing range, where you can see him land an inside leg leg kick here. And Volkanovski is also switching stances when circling. You can see here from orthodox to southpaw and then he momentarily has to square himself so he can open up the surface area of his body to try and land a high kick but he's unsuccessful in that attempt here. As the body blocks that shot with his guard but the reason Volkanovski is switching stances is to give the body a different looks and ultimately try and disrupt his rhythm so that it can offset his striking and that's why Volkanovski keeps switching stances although it's worth noting that Volkanovski wasn't having it all his own way downstairs and that the body I was actually having success with low kicks as well and this one here you can see land. Volkanovski doesn't check it, he absorbs it flush and it actually spins him round. The motion and the force behind that low kick was that powerful that it spun him round and he wasn't off balance when he took it either which could have potentially distorted how truly powerful it was. Although in the punching exchanges it's worth noting that Volkanovski did have some success as well in that opening round as you can see see there landing a good left hand but downstairs you could see a difference in how much their leg kicks were affecting the other person respectively you can see here that as the body are lands it offsets Volkanovski off balance and as a contrast to Ilya you can see that Volkanovski's left leg is significantly more red it's more reddened up from the damage and at close proximity Volkanovski is reluctant to engage as much you can see here that they both look to land a shot at the same time and miss and then as Ilya the body looks to follow up you'll see that Volkanovski is not looking to counter him with shots, he's just looking to create distance between himself and the body are safely. And there's a notable hesitation from Volkanovski when they look to strike upstairs, and you can see here that he switches stances so that he's better placed to attack the inside of Ilya Taboria's lead leg, and that's what he's been targeting in that first round, and he lands successfully again. Offensively and defensively, Volkanovski is having more success at kickboxing range. You can see him withdraw his lead leg in time here as the Borea looks to land a low kick of his own and he's able to mitigate that danger. And Volkanovski's success at kickboxing range is notably different to the short range exchanges he has. The second round begins and it's interesting to note that when the body advances with his attacks upstairs, Volkanovski is not actually looking to counter him with punches. It's more so a decoy posture with that left hand of his to try and offset the body when he makes his entries. And you'll see here that the body throws a right hand and then afterwards, Volkanovski doesn't look to counter counter him with a left hook but instead uses that left hand just to control him and to create distance and mitigate any offense that comes his way very defensively mindful and once again you can see him put distance between himself and the body are now in this example you'll see Volkanovski has now begun a habit of circling in the same direction each time and that makes him more predictable so what he does to offset that then is switch into southpaw and the body are feints at him slightly but watch Volkanovski and how heavily he bites on this feint very subtle feint from the body out, but watch the exaggerated effect it has. And Volkanovski, whether in orthodox or southpaw, continues circling towards that right hand of the body out, which is actually his power side. But I also want you to note this statistic you see on the screen here, and the body has thrown more head strikes than to the body and to the lower section combined. And you're about to see the significance of that, but moving on to the next sequence, you'll see Volkanovski is biting less on the feints by the body out, but it's also also worth noting that he's becoming more flat footed as a result and more stationary and so as a result of that more leg kicking opportunities present themselves 
as Volkanovski's got his weight on that front leg and you can see how much of an effect these leg kicks are having. And Volkanovski begins committing less to the punches. You can see him flare out his arm here but not really committing to the shot. More so being mindful and prepared for anything that might come back. And you'll see him withdraw from the sequence before a shot's even come his way. And being that defensively mindful of what's coming back his way limited his offense and how potent it could be because you can see here that as he looks to land his low kick he's more preoccupied with the right hand that's coming his way and that lessened the impact of his own offense in that respect as he was more focused on avoiding that right hand from the body instead although it is a trademark feature of Volk to keep that right hand very high towards his head we've seen that in fights against Korean Zombie against Brian Ortega for example and in the next example Volkanovski pumps out a jab but Ilias slips on the inside of it so that the body has a clear vision of the target in front of him and he tries catching Volk with the right hand over the top but he's unsuccessful but look at how overextended he is afterwards. Ilya's in a very compromised position here and being that overextended maximizes the retraction time that's necessary to get his hand back up to his guard and at that particular moment Volkanovski had the chance to counter him but he chose not to do so and instead used that left hand just to create distance before switching into southpaw and then afterwards I want you to pay attention to a few things here. Watch Volkanovski's back foot leave the ground as he fully extends on this jab, where he's at the full extension of his punch, but his foot leaving the ground demonstrates that he's fully committed to throwing that jab, and when he's outstretched like that, the retraction time to get his arm back is longer. But above all else, pay attention to the statistic you're about to see. You can see that just a minute prior to the knockout, it showed on the UFC's television screen that over half of the body ass strikes were to the head. And so Volkanovski was naturally expecting a headshot to come in light of recent behavior. And you can see Volkanovski's right hand bracing for a headshot from the Bodia, but it doesn't arrive. And instead, Ilya the Bodia decides to go for a body shot instead, and it takes Volk by surprise. Not only was he protecting his face with his hand, but he was also turning his head away in anticipation of that right hand arriving upstairs, but it never did. And this time he went to the body instead of the head, and then afterwards, Ilya the Bodia decides to go for a left hook upstairs but Volk partially takes the sting out of this as you can see where his right glove being up already took the momentum out of that shot partially but enough still gets through and you can see here from the head movement of Volkanovski after that left hook that the shot still knocks his head back slightly and you can see that he's blindsided to the right hand and he doesn't see it coming as he's still recovering from that left hook partially although the body doesn't quite connect with that right hand although shortly afterwards you then see him frame on the head of Volkanovski to keep him in a fixed position and also blindside him to the follow-up right hand that then arrives. And Volkanovski is framing on the side of Ilya the Bodia's head while he takes his head off the centre line and throwing that right hand to evade any counter and he lands flush. And ultimately that drops Volkanovski and the referee then intervenes after a very short stint of ground and pound but it's worth noting that this was very intentional on the Bodia's part in the sense that for the majority of the fight he was mainly throwing right hands upstairs. There were headshots even with the left hook follow-ups, it was the headshots that he'd conditioned Alexander Volkanovsky to expecting upstairs, and that's why Volkanovsky was very mindful with that right hand guard up, as Volk was very mindful to the threat of the body upstairs with the headshots, and how potentially damaging they could be, and transpired to be, so it was a very intentional setup on the body as part. And when looking at the knockout sequence, you can see that it really did buck the trend of what was happening in the other exchanges, where Volk himself Himself was bracing for that right hand upstairs and even turning his face away in expectancy of the right hand to go upstairs but instead it's to the body and then Volkanovski is distracted momentarily and can't quite take the full sting out of that left hook as you're about to see from the head movement of Volkanovski when it lands you can see the head tilt and then the body arm misses with the right hand well he doesn't miss but he doesn't quite catch him flush in the way he wanted to and only slightly clips Volk afterwards then he frames on the head of Volkanovski before setting up that final shot and very defensively responsibly Ilya the Bodia takes his head off the center line before delivering it so that he's out of harm's way and that's ultimately how Ilya the Bodia set up Volkanovski for that knockout and that's how the fight ended. Ilya the Bodia won via stoppage and the belt switched hands whereby he's now the new featherweight champion of the world. And I'm now going to post a few other breakdowns of specific nuances relating to this fight and the after effects this could potentially have on Spanish MMA. And perhaps Europe as a conglomerate too. 
Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer for you in future videos or the extended breakdowns, just tweet them over to me. That's at ElusiveRaf on Twitter. If you guys want to see my daily fight analysis uploads, I upload those every day to Instagram and that's at Elusive 2.0 on Instagram.